Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindo Mbarak and I welcome you to our fifth, the sixth, our sixth lecture of learning how to make uh, web applications using Flutter uh, as we always do. We're going to do 40 minutes daily. So I've already started my counter. So when it clocks to 40 minutes, we'll call it a lecture. So today we're going to proceed from what we talked in the previous class. And uh, yesterday we were able to get introduced to how we can add packages into our mobile applications. And we were able to add our first package of Toast. And then we saw how it worked and how it added value to our applications. So we also went ahead and got introduced to how we can add the form builder. And we were able to add the form builder package. Uh, however, we do not do anything with it, but we just... Uh, Went through the process of adding this form builder package into a project so if you don't know how to add a form builder package you can watch our previous video or if you already know you can uh, go ahead and add this form builder package in your flutter application so today we're going to dive deep into it and we learn how we collect data of flutter in different ways to our application because as we discussed you say that uh, most things in our application they depend on data collection so we're going to go into deep, 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 how or into that uh, field of how to collect data. So that without, without much said, let's go straight into our business. So as you can see, I've already started running my application, and that is a screen of my phone. And um, you can see I've already opened my projects there. So I'm going to go ahead and open our documentation. That's going to act as our syllabus of what of form builder. So here is the documentation of form builder, and uh, these are the different things that we're going to look at. So it has features, it has input and the possible par parameters, and then how we can make its usages, its usage. So let's go ahead and uh, go into inputs. The different okay, let's begin by the feature that can do. So here I will explain to you the feature that can do. We can create. Um, forms with different ways of input we can uh, get the values from the form with the easiest way like almost the easiest way that i know of collecting values from the form so this provides it we can validate these forms using this particular package and then we can also uh, do listeners like uh, when someone enters a wrong value we can also listen lively on these forms so with that said uh, these are the features that are this app, this application offers. Then now we go to the inputs. I mean, uh, we go to the what? To the to the possible fields that it offers. So here are the possible fields that it currently offer. But these people always upload and add more things to the fields. I mean, they add, add more features to the fields. So as we proceed, they can even add more, so you can learn them along the way. But at this moment, these are the fields that they are offering. So we are going to go into, I mean, we're going to discuss it, each of them and you see how we can make use of it. So the first one is uh, the checkbox. Another one is the uh, checkbox group. Another one is a choice chip. Another one is the date picker range, uh, the date range picker. Another one is date time picker. Another one is a drop down. It offers a drop down. It offers a filter. It also offers a radio group and then range slider and then the um, the slide itself and also the switch then the most common one which is the what the text field so i'm going to go through the most common one and then the ones which are optional will get will leave them for you to practice them out so this is the one that we use most and the one that we're going to begin with so on top of these fields it offers uh, different parameters and you can go ahead and go through these parameters uh, in a free time and see what they mean so with that said we're going to create a, a page and we see how we can start demonstrate the this what this uh, uh, this what uh, what this uh, package so let's go ahead and uh, see we're going to begin by creating a screen and then we see how we can demonstrate this very first one which is the form builder text okay so we're going to create a screen for text field so to do that, we'll go ahead into our, to our application and then we come here to our home page, this home page, the screen. 
let me increase the font so you can see clearly. I don't know. I think you can still see. You guys are not blind. Yeah, you are not. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do it. And uh, I hope you can see. Guys, can you see? Can I get confirmation? Members, you can see my code clearly. All right. So I don't need to increase the font. Good. So. I uh, will go ahead and create a separate screen for what? For text field. So I'll come here and then I'll duplicate this guy, this top one. As you see that you're going to be putting our things on top. So I'll come and duplicate this guy and come and put him here. And then after I can maybe get rid of uh, the leading icon. Okay, no problem. Uh, so I'm going to call this one. Um, I'm going to call it let me let me pick let me duplicate the one which has the navigation eh? this one has a toast so let me duplicate the one with the navigation so i'll come and paste this guy here and then come and call this one um form builder okay let's say maybe input text text let me just get the name of this guy same name okay so come here and put form builder text field okay text field form builder text field so we are going to look at uh, text field so i want when someone click here uh, you should be able to get that screen of text field So, all right, we're going to go ahead and create a screen for text field. Okay, let's go ahead and create the form for for text fields. I mean a screen. So I'll come here to this screen number six. We can duplicate that very screen. Eh? So I'll copy it and then paste it. And then I'm going to call it number seven and I call it uh, text field screen. Okay. And then press enter. Then I can come here and rename this guy. Right click and then come and say refactor rename. So if you do like that, it will automatically update everything. So I'll come here and call it text field screen or page i think you're using let's use page or screen let's use page <laughs> yeah, because you can use page just it's just the wording the naming no problem screen page the same so i'll go ahead and press enter so i'll come here and change the title and call it uh, text input so after doing that, I'll save and then I'll come and remove this stack. Maybe I can remove this stack, the one that we used to demonstrate in the previous class, and then I remove it. Uh, maybe I can put a uh, container. Container, and then open, and then it will have a child. And then I say maybe data goes here. So after creating the screen, I'll go ahead and now make this screen link up with the home screen. So I'll come to the home screen, which is here, and I put when someone clicks here, it should be navigated to the what? To the text field screen, and I save. So let me make sure that this guy is imported. It is imported, and I no, it's not imported yet. Press Alt and Enter, Alt and Enter again. Then I say import. So after importing, I will save. After saving, I should be able now to click here on text build. I mean, form builder text field. I should be able to click there and I navigate to the what? To the. Hmm, no, I'm just text field screen. I think it has not updated. Let me save again. Uh huh. Let me click. Yeah, my laptop is just slow today. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, I have opened many things. I think I need to close some. 
Yesterday I said I'm closing something. Closing the browser which has the meeting. I never got off. And I told myself again. Alright, so there we go. So here we go. You can see we now have this empty screen. So let me come here and just be put just uh, put some padding and let's say let's insert all 20 so it can be kind of having some space around it. Alright, so with that said, now let us go ahead and see how we can put our form. So to put this form, this is how you do it. The first thing you have to to set up the form, like the form, the, the, the form uh, section where you're going to put your inputs. So the reason why we set the form section is uh, you want to be able to have, I mean, you need to be able to control everything in that particular form. Let's say that you have two forms in one screen like two different forms in one screen. So you can use a key to control a group of each form using a particular key. So that's what you begin with. You create a, a, a widget that is going to cover a list of your what? Of your related things in the form that you want. So there is my widget. And the next thing I'm going to do what? I'm going to, I mean, okay, sorry. Here is the widget of form builder. So you say form builder, and then it takes a key. And this is how you utilize a key. And then takes one child i mean takes a child so this is a child so if you have a like a, you want to have more than one child you can put these children in what in a column but the whole point is it takes a, you begin with form builder uh, widget and then you you give it the key that you use to control it and then you give it what a single child so a single child can be like a child itself or it can be a column that can give you children so with that said let's go ahead and uh, create this key first so i'll copy this guy and then come here and then come here and put the key okay so you can do this so i'll put the key and then if it doesn't import it just press alt and enter then say import so it will import it so sometimes they may say things are constant you can remove this constant if uh, you get an error sometimes it's just an option okay so this key is supposed to be here this key is supposed to be here in the yes it's supposed to be First is stateless widget. Alright. I'm not even talking about stateless and stateless. Alright, so that's it. You have to put it there. So if it complains about constant, you remove the constant. So after adding your key, so the next thing is now to add your what? Your 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 form builder widget. Okay. So you can copy it as it is here, or you can go ahead and create it. Okay. So by coming here to container. So if you want the form to cover the whole container, you can just simply come here. And then right click and then say uh, and then say show option and then say maybe you say you want to surround this guy with what with a let's say a container or widget or something which has one child you can say for example center then you go ahead and remove this center and then put the form that you want the form builder something like that or you can as well uh, come here and create it from scratch like put there your form builder and then you open that is it. Alright, so after doing that, uh, it, you must have a child, of course. So, you can come here and say, uh, my heart, my phone. So, that is another thing. So, the last thing that you have to give is a key. So, this key will help you to control this form. So, by putting key and then you put its form. So, like this, it will be able to control this form using this key. So after doing that, so the next thing is uh, now you see we have what we have uh, Alisa, uh, the child and the form did not make an error. So now if we have want to put our input, we have to put them inside here. It can be one, they can be many, but they have to go inside this uh, main widget, the parent widget of form builder. So I'll go ahead and copy this first input, which is called uh, form builder text field. So every form builder widget it will begin with the word form builder and then after you can now go ahead and add more things for example if you press control and space you'll be able to see different options okay so i'm going to put this one text field like this so this text field it must have one thing it must have one thing but it must have one parameter called name so name is just like uh, in html this name is the one that we will use to uh, 
call it or we'll use to do what to identify it so it should be unique so i'll go ahead and give it uh let me first remove this copilot because it's suggesting code it's like the one teaching you i'm not supposed to teach let me first disable this guy copilot where is it it's telling you things before i tell you that's not right um i think it is in tools and then say disable completions yeah this guy was teach like it is good like after you've already learned so after making sure that um this guy is imported so the next thing that i must put is the what is the name so this name parameter it is a must okay and it should be unique in each form that you're creating so i'll go ahead for example and i put their name so after doing that then the rest is optional now the next thing is optional so if i save I should be able to see my what my text field as you can see here so to load and then to show me uh, the text field so there's our text field all right so after doing that so after having our text field there so you see i can go ahead and have somewhere where i can click and start typing so that is uh, really beautiful. Okay, so I can be able to type something. Okay, so now that is how you put the heart. That's how you put the text screen. So before you proceed, we are going to first learn almost everything using uh, this text field. And then after we finish the text field, well, then we'll go ahead and look at other what? Look at other parameters. So that is the approach that we're going to use. So let us look at possible things that this. Uh, Form can take or this form builder can take so to look at them you can just simply press uh, of course you can press control and click on it and then you'll be able to see different parameters that this form can do what can take okay and i've already shown you that how you can navigate through that so we're going to go through the important ones and then the rest you'll be able to do what to do them by yourself so this is uh, the form input field so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to see how we can style it, uh, how we can style it, and then after, okay, let us begin with the, how you can, uh, okay, let us begin with the, how you can style it, then we'll have, see how we can do it, how we can collect data from what, from that form field or input field. So this is just a single one for text to input field. Let us go ahead and create another screen for specifically styling a form. And then after styling, we'll come back and now look at the remaining thing that will be missing. So I'll go back and then after going back, I'm going to create another um, for another item that we're going to use just specifically for styling. So I'll come back to our project homepage and then I'll go ahead and copy this guy and then paste it here. And then it's going to be look much more the same. So I can remove, I can put form builder field styling or you can just remove this first word uh, from builder okay so i can put field styling like this all right so let's go ahead and create a, a separate screen so you can just duplicate this one for text field and make it uh, another thing uh, for styling okay so other than repeating ourselves so i'll press control and click on it and i'll be there so if you click here it will take you to where the file is i'll copy and paste and then call this one number eight number eight and then call it um suppose have that here uh field field form text field styling screen or page press enter and then press here so you can go there so if you want to rename right click and then say refactor and then say rename so you can come here and add the word styling it's supposed to be filled with an e styling page so i'll press enter 
So to refact everything, um, let me rename again, I put a D. So all right, after creating our class, so the next thing you're going to now to link it, okay? So I'll come to home page and then put here our styling page. Press Alt and Enter and then to import it. doing that uh, we are going now to be able to click and then it should be going to start styling so after doing that after doing that let's come here and change this one to styling Uh, so after doing that, now let us see how we can uh, style this field, okay? So, uh, we're going to look at different parameters among the parameters let's look at is the styling one, okay? So, if you want to style this field, press scroll and space, you'll be able to see different things that you can put there, okay? So, let us uh, look at some, and then some, the main one here will be styling. So, the first field that you have here is the initial value. The initial value. Uh, initial value is the value that you want to do what to start with the form. For example, you know sometimes uh, when a user, for example, is editing their profile, you need to show them the names, their names that is already existing or the information that's already existing, so they just modify. So there you may need to give them what some initial value. So initial value is a string that you give the for, to the form to start with. For example, if I want to here to start with the, my name. I'll go ahead and put my hidden bar up here, and it means that um, when the user will open the form for the first time, they'll be able to do what? To find the name in that form already. Can you see? The name is already there. So that's initial value. Let me comment it. So another thing that we have that this form can accept, press control and space, I mean control and space to be able to see, it can expect the initial value, it can expect on top. So on top, it will accept a method. A method is uh, like when someone clicks on it, uh, what should happen, okay? What should happen if someone clicks on it? So you can listen to that uh, method. I mean, to that, you can make a listener to that event. So you say on top, and then you open bracket, and then open curl bracket next to it. And then you can be able to do what? Uh, to, for example, I can go ahead and make a toast, or I can print something in the screen. I mean, the in the what in the um, console and say let me see if i can get a toast here i can make a toast and say let's import it and say you clicked on me so inside there, you can do a lot of things uh, in background. You may either, either you want to validate or you want to save or you want to do anything. So that on top method. So now when I go ahead and click on this, I'll be able to do what to see and I toast. I hope you can see it. You see, when I click on it, I get a what? A toast. So that is the what on click listener. On top listener. I'll go ahead and comment it that you can practice it as well. So another listener that we have here is the um, text align. Text align is how you want uh, to align your text, okay? Let's say that uh, you want the text to be centered, so you can go ahead and put text align. So it means that uh, you go ahead and put text align class, and then you put dot. So if you want it to be centered, you put dot center. So it means that the content in uh, in here, the content in this text, it will be what? It will be centered when a user is doing what? Is typing. So if I come here and I type, you'll see that uh, everything that I'm typing is what? Is centered. 
So that is how you center. So I'll just show you the possibilities of the form and then for you, you can see how you can make uh, use of it uh, creatively. Uh, so you have on center, then you have another thing, maximum lines. So this one is uh, like when you, have, when you want to limit the number of what? The number of lines. So this one we'll try them after we've done what after we've finished the decoration one or the styling one okay so let me go ahead and uh, begin on the this decoration so decoration it will take uh, input decoration and then in the input decoration there are different things that you can do with it okay so I'll copy that input decoration and then come and put it here. Okay. So this input decoration has so many parameters that can do what that it can take. So if you want to see them, just press control and click on it. Then you'll be able to see the different parameters that this input decoration can take. So the first parameter is the icon. So if you want to put an icon, on your input, you just simply come here and pass an icon. So this icon, if you want to see what it takes, just press control and click on it. You'll be able to see what this icon takes. It takes what a widget. So when they say widget, it means that you can even write even there your text. Okay, but it is good practice to pass what they recommend you to pass. So I can go and pass icon, and then I put maybe icons dot. Example, like this, that person. So now that is an icon. So when you put it there, you'll be able to see where an icon can come. So this what is meant by an icon. So if you want to make such kind of user interface where you want to explain everything to a user, you can go ahead, I mean with the relevant icon, you can go ahead and make use of this. So you see, with the simplicity, I'm able to achieve that. So let's go ahead and look at other things that they, you can even check the color of that icon etc. So let us go ahead and look at another thing that this input decoration can take. Press control and click on it. You can take icon color. So this icon color is the color that you want to specify for the what? For the icon. So if I come here and say icon color, I can go ahead and put colors dot what the braid. Okay, so when I do like that, I will make sure or they'll try to make uh, my icon to be of a what? Of a red color. So you see, it has become red. So that is uh, another. Uh, input. So I go ahead and look at another thing. It is a label. So a label is uh, now the, as it sounds, it is the label of what of your uh, text. Okay. So I can go ahead and pass this label. So I can go ahead and give another parameter called label. So when I say label, uh, you can go ahead and determine what it takes. Let me. So I put the label in the wrong place here. You can go ahead and see what it takes. Am I putting it right? I have to put it in the, the decoration, right? Yeah. So this label parameter, I can go ahead and look at what it takes by pressing Ctrl and click on it. So it will go ahead and show me this label takes a widget. So it means that you have a control in how you want to put the label of this text. It can be a picture, it can be an icon, it can be a what, it can be a text in any style that you want. Why? Because it is a what, it is a widget. So I can go ahead and, for example, put text, say this, or I can say maybe full name. So after doing that, if I save, you'll be able to see that uh, I'll have now something that represents this uh, what this this um, field. So if someone comes here and click on there, someone will be able to see full name. Okay. So I can maybe duplicate this guy. Let me let us make this one a column. So to make a column, we we'll just simply come outside here, press Alt and Enter. We right click on it, and then you say 
columns so it will be wrapped into column so i can duplicate this guy so we can have two maybe and then maybe we can have here maybe address so i can come and change this one to address and then maybe come and change icon to pin So if I save, now I should have like uh, two things, okay? All right, so now we have one field for, for text, another field for address. So you see how it is uh, very simple to make use of them, I mean to implement them. So now let us go ahead and proceed. So we say that this label, it will give you ability to pass a widget. So that widget, of course, you can pass anything that you want. It can be a text, it can be a small image, it can be a picture, it can be like a description. As long as it is a widget, you have like almost full control over your thing, but it should be making what? It should be making sense and you've seen that the label is just a, a description of that particular field so you can go ahead and proceed and look at another thing which is the label text so assume that you need just a default uh, control on the label so instead of using a widget you can go ahead and pass the label text so the label text for it will accept a what it will accept a string so you just only pass a what a string so let me try to pass both of them and you see i hope I may get an error. So you see, the label text is expecting a what? A string. So let me go ahead and put maybe, uh, I pass the string, okay, and I save. So when I save, you see, I'll get an error. The reason why I'm getting an error is because you cannot pass the label and the label text in the same time. You have to use only one of them. So if I commit this guy and I save, let me just try to go back. Now, if I click there, you'll see that my label field will be there. So this is the label field. The label field will give you full control, whereby you can modify even the appearance of your, of your text. Whereas the label text, you will do it with simplicity by just passing uh, the name or the string of, uh, of a label, and that's all. But you will not be able to do what? To modify that much. So that is uh, how you pass the what? The label and the label text. So you can proceed. We have the label style. So this label style is text a what a text style that uh, right. Come in five minutes. Which thing? So so this label style JP I'm finishing five minutes. I'm so this label style, it will allow us to style this text that we'll have displayed here. So in case you want to style it, just simply use this label style to, what? to style. This guy want to. I helped him and he want to my pressure. So this label style, it will give you ability to what to style your label okay so you can use any of them okay so if you want you can use the other one directly and you can use this label styling okay so here you can go ahead maybe and specify maybe the the, 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 the color the size the font weight for example let me say font weight you can say maybe uh font weight and then do t w weight maybe 700 okay so by doing like that you'll be able to increase the font weight of your part of your uh, label text so you can be able to modify you can be able to style you see it has styled it up so it gives you ability or full control to do your things so it will be up to you to be creative and see how you can make use of everything but it gives you almost full control so let's look at another parameter. So another parameter is the 
label style we've finished it is the floating label style and so in case like uh, we have two styles here right now we can style it like uh, when uh, so before someone clicks on it and when, when after someone clicks on it what you want to display for example i say that if after someone has clicked on it i want it maybe to be in a red color so that you can pass another style and call it a what floating label style so this floating label style will give us ability to style our text when it is what it is floating like this so i can say maybe when it is floating the font weight should be uh, maybe uh, thin let's say maybe uh, let's okay let's say that when before you before you 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 it floats it is thin and after it when it is floating it is maybe thick or bold i can even change maybe when it is floating it should be having a color of maybe a blue something like that something like that so if i save now when i come here and i click on it you see i mean if i click on it it is uh, going to be thin it is thin but when i click on it it becomes blue and becomes much more thick so it means that you can style before you it floats and also you can style it after it has what after, when it is floating. So we have a hint. So a hint is the description of a certain field uh, that can explain or can give much more details about something. Okay. So let's say that you want to say maybe uh, full name and then you want to explain to the user, enter here your full name. To do that, you just simply go ahead and give what you call a hint. Okay, so hint will also be passed into the decoration. Okay, and say hint text. So hint text, it can be, it is a string. For example, I can say enter, enter your full name here, and then put a comma here. So by doing like this, uh, I'll be able to see hint. Okay, after someone has clicked on my part on my input thing. So before you click on it, you will not see the hint. You see like here, I'm not seeing the hint. But when I click on it, I will see the the hint that explains to me what I should do exactly in this what in this field. So uh, that is also another important thing. You have also hint style. For example, you want to style your hint, you can also give it a what a text style and style it the way you want. This is the hint style. So I can say maybe the hint should be uh, uh, ray. I mean, should be maybe uh, uh, should be maybe gray, and maybe should be like a real, real thin. This like uh, like very thin, like this. So if I save uh, this hint style, will be able to format the what the hint itself. So I click there, you'll see like the hint is really. All right, so after we can look at uh, the hint text decoration. So in case you want to, com to completely give like complete decoration on a hint, you can also use this hint text decoration. Then you have hint max lines. For example, you want to limit the hint maximum lines, you can pass it from there. Then you have the error text. So the error text is the error, I mean, is the text of the error uh, that you want to display when a, an error happens okay so i can go ahead and give you an example of error text that will be displayed when maybe something happens so i can go ahead and give this error text and then go like this and let's say maybe name full name is required and i save so when i save this will happen when the form is validated and uh, maybe there's an error and then this error will do what will be shown but right now it's not validated we may not so it's there. So full name is required and it is always in what? In red. So you can see it is there. So you can go ahead and also format this error text by giving it what? Error style. So these things that are repetitive, you can go ahead and do them by yourself. So we have is a collapsible, is collapsed. So in case you want to control whether it should be collapsed or expanded, you can use this is collapsed. Then another one we have is dense. Is dense is when you want to check whether it should be as minimal as possible or not. So if I want to make it like very small, I have to say is dense and I say it's true. So when I say true, 
it's going to be a little bit smaller compared to how it is uh, was. So this is this will give a uh, like optimization and make it much more smaller. So if I put passes dense, you will see that everything here is trying to be minimized. That's what is meant by this dense. And if I pass false, it will be kind of large. So as you can see, our 40 minutes are up. So we call it a day. And we call it a lecture. So in the next lecture, I'll be able to proceed from here. But I emphasize you go and uh, try as many things as you can so that you can be able to watch to understand these things and when you reach to implementation you have a lot of ideas and you don't get confused so i hope you have subscribed to our youtube channel and if you haven't you should now then the next lecture will have to begin from there so goodbye and see you in the next class Things are not simple. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Did I record anyway? Yeah,